talk about kind of transition over to a win you guys had on a big arrest of uh, Tristan Curl, the uh, Freedom High. Uh, I don't even know what is he former student, um, raining terror on Freedom High School kids with the uh, the text messaging and the I don't even know pornography, whatever it was. You guys got him in Texas, and this was a two three month investigation. And and I don't want you to give away anything that'll that'll hurt the case because I know it's still in the courts. What was the challenges with that case, and what was it like to finally be able to actually share information with very concerned parents that were kind of like, what are they doing? They're not, you know, it's hard to listen to that because you guys were investigating, but what was the challenges with that case? Right. One one of the problems that we have in any criminal investigation is the idea about the how much information can we really let go with um, about how the investigation is con- is going on. And what you what you find in, in communities is you find that people will start to challenge the police department because why can't you solve this case when somebody else was able to solve the exact same style of case? And realistically, when you look at the intricacies of these cases, every case is completely different. And so it's just those ideas. Um, in this investigation itself, it began with a series of threats among students at the high school. And that's really how this thing began. And and so the police department began their investigation associated with that. And what I have to do nowadays is with my investigators is they have to be trained in a whole bunch of different topics. And, you know, again, in, in, this, in a world where that things constantly change, um, and in this tech world, the, what's standard today is going to be completely different tomorrow. And and so when this investigation began, it was kind of interesting because we had partnered with the elementary schools to go through and to actually have a event where we brought in parents and we brought in some private um, businesses as well to talk about what the responsibilities are of a parent and to talk about what we needed them to do to help us as a community. And uh, we had 350 chairs set up, and there was maybe 10 of those chairs filled Jeez. before this investigation began. And so it's one of those things of you you were doing this investigation. We understand where we're going with this. We put out this information, and, and nobody essentially shows up for this with the idea of if this is a concern, people will be here. So no one, no one really came out for that. And as this investigation continued, it transitioned from, a small group of students who are receiving these messages to a broadcast message threatening the principal, threatening the school itself, and threatening the other students. And then the investigation, um, the impact of this investigation took a little bit of a larger turn. And so now you had a whole bunch of people that were concerned about this. And and so it's just those ideas. Um, what we want to do is we need to share information with parents. We need to make sure that the school itself is secure. Um, and so with this investigation, we began every morning, we'd sit down with the principal and sit down with the superintendent. And to this day, I go to the school and it's kind of <laughs> one of those things of, oh, here we are, we're going to have this morning meeting again. But what we do is we, we exchange information. We'd say, here's where we're going. Here's what we think. And I got to tell you, when we started this whole investigation, my belief was we probably had about a one to a three percent chance of solving the case and it was just because of the technology that was being used and how the offender was using the system well how do you go from three percent to catching them because that that's huge and speaks volume to your investigators and 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 it is those ideas of um one of the great things about having pit bulls is they never let go um And so it's just those ideas of by involving the FBI, by involving the State Department of Justice, by involving our friends in Brentwood and involving our friends in other parts of the the county itself, um, the district attorneys played a great role in this case. What we're able to do is get the best of the best, the smartest people in the world who know each of these different kinds of technologies and get them in one place to come and help us through this process. And what happened was because we had brought in those experts, um, the day we gave a presentation at a um, at a tech um, investigator course, we talked about our case. We talked about the impact that it had on the community. And there was one guy in the audience who said, well, how about if we go through and try this? And because of a couple different things that just happened to fall in place that exact day, Jeez. it was we were able to do this. And we had, again... 
We had people in Washington, D.C. from the FBI helping us. We had actually sent employees down to Snapchat headquarters down in Santa Monica. Um, and, and it was all those things that came together on that day to say, I think we've figured out the right guy. And it is those things of you sit there and you go, for me, you go from a 1% to 3% chance to saying, hey, chief, I think we got the guy. Wow. Um, it's one of those things of you sit there and you say, you know, um, for Chief Thorson, this happened right at the time Purdue he was retiring. And I'd have to tell you, it wasn't the gold watch necessarily that was the best result that time period. It was the fact that we had gone through and gotten been able to solve this case. And so what was that like to finally be able to tell the principal, we got him? Yeah. Announce it. Announce it. <laughs> it, it was one of those... Um, you want to be reserved of saying we want to make sure we got the guy and, and that night we'd actually physically gotten reports from the officers in the field of they have the individual and there's no doubt in their mind they have the right guy and you just it, it, it's that you see people just with the 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 weight of the world lifted from their shoulders and for us as a police department made a significant difference as well because one of the things that we try to do is to make sure that the community trusts us and that they understand that we're competent in doing the things that we do. And there's no detective who says, I don't want to solve a police case. None of them want to go through and do that. But there's just some times where cases don't necessarily give us the information we need to have. And, and so it's those ideas of we don't close a case, but it's those ideas of we got to go to the next case because there's just nothing for us to do, work on this case. So for us in this investigation, um, again, what a great uh, uh, what a great task those employees did, and what a great job that they did in this. Um, and it was those ideas of the, the members of the community certainly um, helped me in motivating my employees through their their laudatory actions of the police department. You know, um, people like to be told thank you for what yes. you do. And I think that that's something that we all kind of forget now and then of it's uh, it's okay to say please and thank you once in a while. 